What's up guys? Uh, on today's episode of Europe Fed Builds, it's a very special and impromptu, but very sad. Today we say goodbye to the 993. So yes, that is true. Um, the 993 is sold. Um, the offer came up that was just too good to pass up. So Mickey had made a decision to sell it, which, you know, sad to see it go, but we do know it's going to a home where the owner, new owner is going to enjoy the hell out of it. Probably just as much as we did. But before it goes, I wanted to give you guys an exclusive look at the whole car and pretty much showcase what was done to the full vehicle. Cause this is probably one of our most in depth <laughs> in-depth builds to date and really kind of showcases the level of attention to detail that we kind of put into every single one of our own personal builds and for our own customer builds so yeah sit back and let's show you guys the Eurofin 993. All right, so a uh, quick story of how this car came to be. It is a 1996 uh, Porsche Carrera S, and essentially we took the car in, it was black, uh, pr in pretty good shape, but we decided to completely tear it down to its bare shell and build it from the ground up. Um, so that includes a completely ref refreshed in and out, and every single thing has been changed on it, essentially. Uh, from, the, from the suspension, wheels, interior, everything is, has been perfected to our best abilities on this platform, what we think is the ultimate 993. But first off, let's start off with the most striking part of the car, which is the exterior. All right, so for the exterior, um, it is on GT2 flares. However, we took the factory GT2 Porsche flares, we had them on for a while, but then took them to Street Proof Customs and actually had them widened by three inches on all four corners. And it is, it definitely gives it a striking stance and Part of the other kit of the GT2 kit is this front lip right here. You see? Pretty nice. Oh, there's just something about you know a well done overflare kit because I'm not actually usually a big overflare kit um, fan. I think you know smooth out body kit really works, but this I don't know. It, it just works. It's it, it it really just gives it a real badass vibe about it. There's something utterly hot roddy about this car I don't, that, I, that I've always loved about it. But yeah, and then next thing is the Jeep big wing. Very well known. What made many people think this actually was a GT2. However, it's the Europe at Porsche. And so on top of the exterior modifications, other than just the flares, is the entire car has been repainted. Um, so this is actually freshly fresh paint and then every single seal you see here has been changed it's been added everything that we could buy new from Porsche was bought every little annoying rubber bit so all the window seals infamous sunroof seals those are always fun to deal with <laughs> but literally everything you can see is brand new from Porsche big Porsche taillights it's, it's it's probably my favorite part of the car is the way it looks it's everywhere it rolls to every show it's been to it really just kind of halts everybody it's pretty cool to see because you don't see cars you don't see a porsche like this wild normally and so kind of seeing everyone's reaction to it is always fun because it's equally as fun it's so cool but next up to suspension all right so for suspension uh we went with motion control coilovers and we replaced every single control arm bushing that we could with spherical joints. Um, honestly, the motion control cool levels on this thing are absolutely insane. Um, they are by far, like, the fact you're able to get this kind of ride height and still have really good, like, ride comfort, it's pretty insane. And just because this has stretch tires does not mean it doesn't handle. This thing handles insanely well on back roads. It's pretty crazy. Um, yeah, so suspension, motion control coilovers, and, um, every adjustable control arm you could think of getting for this. I think most of it's SPL, but yeah. And very wide, very beautiful. RSCs, road from RSCs. I think they, they pull off the look of the car. Good. 
However, the exterior really kind of pales in comparison to what interior work has been done to this. Now, when I say attention to detail, I really do mean everything on the interior has been touched. Everything, everything from, well, let, let me just show you. All right, so here we go. All right, so we're in the interior now and starting off with this beautiful, genuine, uh, raw weld RWB uh, steering wheel. Uh, now, while this is on the car, this is actually not an RWB. It's not at all. Um, we eventually were planning on putting a not sticker on that next to the raw belt for Griff, but you forget things sometimes. It's okay. Make you forget. But yeah, so art raw belt steering wheel. And then probably the single handedly best thing you could ever put on a car. I don't care what you drive, try and find a reason to put one of these in a car. It's the best shifter ever. You can tell I like it a lot. Anyway, it is a CAE uh, short shift, tower short shifter. So it is not a sequential. Common misconception when people see this is thinking it's a sequential. I understand why I think it is, but it is actually still an H pattern manual. And it's just probably the most satisfying shifter ever. Just every single shift. Mechanical wonder, it's perfect. And then it leads to where I'm sitting in. So we have these beautiful um, Recaro seats that we were able to source. Um, they, surprisingly, the first time I, rode in this, I ever drove this car was actually from Chattanooga to back to Atlanta from Riverside. These are by far the comfiest aftermarket seats I've ever been in, bar none. And then next we have the, pretty much the catalog of everything you can get from Redline. Um, so that includes these beautiful aluminum um, floor pan, breast pedal, and shifter box. It's, again, with all that mechanical feel, like the same with the CAE, it just adds so much more to the driving experience on this thing. It's incredible. Then we have the same on the passenger side, front line handles. And then now, the latest change that was made before this car was sold, uh, is sold, was the interior got all suede. Legitimately, everything in the car is suede, so you have the dash, the door cards in their entirety, and even the roll cage. So yes, it also has a full roll cage. Everything, everything in the interior that could be done in suede was done in suede, including the headliner as well. Yeah, I, <laughs> this thing is pretty insane. Uh, I'm so sad. But yes. However, that's just one of the parting pieces of this beautiful car because the engine, it, now we're on the subject of the engine. So the engine, it was completely taken out when the car was stripped down and taken and rebuilt with all new fresh seals, fresh seals, fresh gaskets, everything you can do, completely refresh the motor. This is a 3.6, um, naturally aspirated, but the exhaust on it. It's a titanium exhaust that was built by our buddy Bryson, uh, the painter, um, years ago, and still to this day, it's one of the most unique sounding Porsches just because of, it sounds brutal, and I will show you right now. All right guys, so I hope that gives you a better idea of what kind of work went into creating our iconic uh, 993 uh, Porsche 911. Uh, I'm definitely gonna miss seeing it go just because even before working for Eurofed, I've, I've been following this build and it's still to this day one of my favorite Porsche builds of all time. And I'm not even saying that just because I'm an employee, I genuinely, this is the car that really showed me what attention to detail really means to a build. It's, a, a build is not just a nice piece of wheels and you know having one amazing thing it's a culmination of a bunch of small details that create a truly refined build you know it's it's that level of precision that really you know has gravitated gravitate to our own builds because now i build my own car to this kind of standard just because 
I don't see any other way of building a car. Um, but yeah, um, hope you guys enjoyed this unorthodox, but hopefully enjoyable Europe at In-Depth. Uh, make sure you guys like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.